There are a great many options available to developers to help them comply with Part L 2010. Here are our top tips to help you find the most cost effective solutions. Make sure all your light bulbs are low energy. Not only are low energy bulbs now acceptable in place of dedicated fittings, but the proportion of low energy to standard bulbs now has a really big impact on the dwelling emission rate. With low energy bulbs being relatively cheap, this is a very cost effective way of reducing carbon emissions and aiding compliance. Identify and reduce thermal bridging. Whilst calculating psi values for each thermal bridging junction may incur a cost, using accurate values instead of defaults can greatly reduce the DER. Lower the thermal mass. A low thermal mass, for example timber frame, means the heating system does not have to heat the building fabric. This reduces the dwelling's heating demand and subsequently its carbon emissions. Invest in your building fabric. It is possible to achieve compliance with Part L 2010 without the need for renewable technology if you can reduce your fabric U values. If the dwelling is to be assessed under the Code for Sustainable Homes, this approach will gain you valuable credits under Energy 2, Fabric Energy Efficiency. Seal and insulate your party walls. With the heat loss from a party wall now taken into account in the SAP calculation, it is very important to ensure that you are not penalised for a U-value of 0.2 in a party wall. By sealing the cavity, ensuring that there is no air movement, and fully filling it with insulation, you ensure a U-value of 0 is achieved and that no penalty is incurred. Watch out for the air tightness confidence factor. Any dwelling that is not air tested at as-built stage will be subject to a confidence factor, whereby a figure of 2 is added to the average air test result on site and used in the SAP calculation. If you are confident of achieving a low air test result and your build schedule allows, it could well be worth air testing every dwelling to avoid incurring the penalty of the confidence factor. Enhance your heating controls. Use delayed start thermostats and weather compensators and where possible, twin zone control. These will all greatly reduce the dwelling emission rate. Consider the SAP at an early stage in the design process. With solar gain having a large impact on the dwelling emission rate, designing a site layout to maximise this could save costs elsewhere on the build. Finally, make sure your assessor is accredited. With ever-evolving regulations, you need to make sure that the assessor you're using is up to date with the current regs and is also aware of how they're going to impact your build costs.